Imagine sinking in a sea of debt, where the more you struggle, the deeper you go. Sounds terrifying, doesn't it? But that's the reality for many people today. We live in an era where credit is easily accessible, and the allure of instant gratification often overshadows the long-term consequences of debt. Globally, the issue of personal debt is becoming more prevalent. From credit card bills to student loans, from mortgages to car payments, the chains of debt are wrapping tighter and tighter around the world's economy. The consequences of this debt are far-reaching and often underestimated. It's not just about the stress of making monthly payments or the burden of interest piling up. Debt can impact your ability to save for the future, limit your freedom to make life choices, and even affect your mental health. Yet despite these alarming facts, financial literacy remains a secondary concern for many. It's easy to swipe a card or sign a loan agreement, but understanding the true cost of that debt is a skill that many lack. And this lack of knowledge is a dangerous pitfall. This isn't about pointing fingers or creating fear, it's about understanding the reality of the situation and arming ourselves with the knowledge to navigate it. Financial literacy is not just about knowing how to make money, it's also about understanding how to manage it, how to save it, and importantly, how to avoid the pitfalls of debt. In this world of easy credit and instant gratification, it's essential to remember that not everything that glitters is gold. Not all purchases are worth the burden of debt they come with. And it's these purchases, these products and services that we need to be aware of and avoid. Now that we understand the gravity of the debt situation, let's delve into the products and services you should avoid buying on debt. You may feel like a king driving that brand new luxury car off the lot, but remember, if it's on credit, it's not really yours. Let's dive into the world of car loans. Picture this, you've just signed the papers for a brand new car. It smells fresh, it's shiny, and you're thrilled. But are you aware that the minute you drive that car off the lot, its value depreciates significantly? That's right, your brand new car isn't so new anymore. Now let's say you finance this car. You're on a five-year loan plan, making monthly payments. But here's the kicker, the car is depreciating faster than you're paying off the loan. This means even after one or two years of payments, you could owe more on the car than it's actually worth. This situation is referred to as being upside down on your car loan. It's a tricky spot to be in. If you want or need to sell the car before the loan is paid off, you might have to cough up extra cash to cover the remaining balance. Or let's imagine you're in an accident and the car is totaled. Even after insurance pays the current value of the car, you could still be left with a hefty bill to pay off the loan. So, before you get dazzled by that shiny new ride, consider the financial implications. A car isn't like a house, it doesn't appreciate in value over time. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's a depreciating asset and financing it means you're essentially paying interest on something that's losing value every day. Look at your budget, consider your needs, and make a wise decision. A reliable, slightly used car could serve you just as well without the hefty financial burden of a new car loan. Remember, it's not about what you drive, but how you drive your life. So think twice before getting that shiny new ride on credit. The financial burden might not be worth it. Education is priceless, but is the debt that comes with it worth it? In the pursuit of knowledge and a promising career, many of us have considered or even taken out education loans. However, it's crucial to understand the long-term implications of this financial commitment. Let's delve into the rising cost of education and the burden of student loans. Over the past few decades, the cost of education has skyrocketed, outpacing inflation by a significant margin. This surge in costs has forced many students to rely heavily on loans, creating a vicious cycle of debt that can follow them for years, even decades. Now imagine this, you've graduated, you're on the job market, but your degree doesn't guarantee you a job, let alone a high paying one. The loan repayments start coming in and suddenly you're trapped in a cycle of debt with no clear way out. This is a reality for many graduates today. This isn't to say that education loans are inherently bad, they can open doors to opportunities allowing you to pursue studies and careers that might have been out of reach otherwise. But like any financial decision, they should be approached with caution and understanding. Consider this, not all degrees are created equal. Some might lead to lucrative careers while others could leave you straddled with debt and limited job prospects. Therefore, it's essential to evaluate the potential return on investment before taking out a hefty loan for a degree. Do a cost-benefit analysis. 
Consider the average salary for careers in your field of study and compare that with the total cost of the degree, including the loan repayments. If the numbers don't add up, it might be worth considering other options like scholarships, work-study programs, or even different fields of study. So the next time you consider taking a hefty loan for a degree, do a cost-benefit analysis. It might just save you from a lifetime of debt. Scene script. Vacations are meant for relaxation, not financial stress. But what happens when you finance your dream vacation on credit? Imagine this. You're lounging on a beach in Bali, sipping on coconut water with the sun warming your skin. You're living your dream vacation, except for one tiny detail, it's all on credit. At first glance, it might seem like a harmless shortcut to paradise. After all, who doesn't want to escape the daily grind and jet off to an exotic location? But here's the catch. When you finance your vacation on credit, you're essentially borrowing money that you'll have to repay, often with high interest. Let's break this down. Suppose you spend $2,000 on a vacation financed on a credit card with an annual interest rate of 20%. If you only make the minimum payment each month, it could take you more than 10 years to pay off that single vacation. Yes, you heard that right, 10 years. And the interest you'll end up paying could be more than the original cost of the vacation itself. And here's another pitfall. When you're on holiday, it's easy to get carried away and overspend, especially when you're not immediately feeling the pinch of cash leaving your wallet. Those fancy dinners, extra excursions, and souvenirs can quickly add up, pushing your credit balance higher and higher. It's not just about the financial cost. There's also the emotional toll. The stress of looming credit card bills can cast a long shadow over your post-vacation glow. Instead of returning home relaxed and rejuvenated, you might find yourself anxious and stressed about how to pay off your vacation debt. So, what's the alternative? Start saving for your dream vacation. It might take a bit longer, but when you finally set off on your trip, you'll be able to truly relax, knowing that you're not racking up debt. Remember, memories are priceless, but they shouldn't come at the cost of financial stability. In scene script, designer labels might boost your social standing, but at what cost? Let's delve into the world of haute couture and high-end accessories. The allure is undeniable. Designer brands represent quality, prestige, and exclusivity. However, they also come with a hefty price tag. A single piece of designer clothing or accessory can cost hundreds, even thousands of dollars. This might not be an issue if you're paying with cash you can spare, but when you're buying on credit, the situation changes dramatically. The cost of the item becomes even higher due to interest rates and potential late fees. Furthermore, unlike assets such as real estate or even certain cars, designer items depreciate rapidly. A $1,000 handbag could lose half of its value the moment you walk out of the store, and within a year or two it might only fetch a fraction of its original price on the resale market. This is especially true for trendy items that could go out of style quickly. So what are the financial implications? When you purchase designer items on credit, you're not just paying for the item itself. You're also paying for the privilege of owning it now, rather than saving up for it. This could lead to a cycle of debt, especially if you're continuously buying new items to keep up with the latest trends. And that's not all. The money you spend on these items could be invested elsewhere, potentially earning you a return. But instead, it's tied up in a rapidly depreciating asset. Of course, everyone deserves to treat themselves now and then, but it's important to consider the true cost of these purchases. Are they worth the potential financial strain? Could the money be better spent or invested elsewhere? So before you splurge on that designer bag or shoes, consider the financial implications. Your future self might thank you for it. Who doesn't love a night out at a fancy restaurant or a live concert? But what happens when these become a regular expense on your credit card? Dining and entertainment are two sectors that can quickly burn a hole in your pocket. Especially if you're using credit to fund these experiences, it's easy to fall into the trap of living the high life, enjoying the finest gourmet meals and the most exclusive entertainment events. But it's crucial to remember that these experiences come with a hefty price tag. Think of it this way. When you're sitting in a plush restaurant savoring a delicious meal, you're not just paying for the food. You're also paying for the ambiance, the service, the location, and the brand. That's why your bill at the end of the night might be two, three, or even four times what you'd pay if you cooked the same meal at home. And when you put that expense on your credit card, you're not just borrowing the cost of the meal. 
you're also borrowing the cost of all those extras. The same goes for entertainment. Whether you're catching the latest Broadway show or cheering on your favorite band at a live concert, you're paying for more than just the performance. You're paying for the venue, the production, the marketing, and more. And if you're using credit to cover these costs, you're borrowing money to pay for all of these elements. Now, there's nothing wrong with treating yourself every now and then. But when dining out and attending entertainment events become a regular part of your lifestyle, funded by credit, that's when it can lead to trouble. Each swipe of your credit card adds to your debt. And the more you borrow, the more you'll have to repay with interest. So before you swipe that card for another night out, consider the long-term financial consequences. Are those fleeting moments of pleasure and entertainment worth the potential burden of debt? Only you can answer that question, but remember, every financial decision you make today will impact your financial health tomorrow. We've discussed several products and services that can lead to financial distress when bought on credit, but what does this mean for you? Let's take a moment to reflect on the journey we've embarked on today. We've navigated the treacherous waters of debt and together we've uncovered the traps that lurk beneath the surface. From the allure of shiny new cars to the promise of higher education, the temptation of exotic vacations, the glamour of designer clothing, and even the seemingly innocent pleasures of dining and entertainment. All these can lead us down a slippery slope of debt if we're not careful. Each of these are wonderful things to have and experience, no doubt about that. But when they are bought on credit, they can quickly turn from dreams into nightmares. The key is to understand the difference between what you want and what you can afford. It's about making informed decisions, about being financially responsible. Financial responsibility. Now that's a phrase that can seem daunting, but it doesn't have to be. It's about making choices today that your future self will thank you for. It's about understanding the true cost of debt, the interest payments, the stress, the potential damage to your credit score. It's about knowing that every dollar you borrow today is a dollar plus interest that you'll have to pay back tomorrow. So as we wrap up, I urge you to reflect on your own spending habits. Are you buying things that you want but don't necessarily need? Are you falling into the debt trap, lured by the promise of instant gratification? Are you living beyond your means, borrowing money to fund a lifestyle that you can't really afford? Don't despair if you find yourself answering yes to these questions. Remember, the first step toward solving a problem is recognizing that there is one. And the next step is to take action. Perhaps it's time to reassess your priorities to differentiate between needs and wants. Maybe it's time to create a budget to keep track of your spending and to save for the things you want instead of buying them on credit. Or perhaps it's time to seek professional financial advice to help you navigate your way out of debt and towards financial freedom. Think about your own debt situation. What steps will you take to avoid falling into the debt trap? Share your thoughts and strategies in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Moneymaker Millionaire channel for more financial insights. Remember, your financial future is in your hands.